Hello, Twiggy. Yeah, I'm good Parky. morning. Morning, Parky. This is Charlie. Hi, Charlie. How do you do? Well, here we are at Bista. Um, my first time. Uh, Charlie's been here a few times before. Yeah, I've only been through the front gate. OK, well, but welcome. What, what a place. We're welcome uh, you here by air. It's yeah. a place I love. Amazing. What happened here in the war? What was based OK, uh, it was set up as a standard air, airfield, like you've got the, the hangars that could take anything, but they had Blenheims here uh, for bomber training. Yeah. So Blenheim, Blenheim conversion, and then the boys would then go to their squadrons. Exactly and, uh, so, and the it, we even trained the whole crews were trained here because they had the uh, turret trainer there for, was a, uh, a big gunnery training. Yeah. yeah, and on the airfield over there, there's a concrete circle with a cross in it. Um, the the aircraft would come over and press a, a bomb release, and a light would come on to wherever it um, wherever it targeted, and the camera obscura that they had in station headquarters would spot whether he made it or not or whether, so he, no whether need, he passed out and went in no need to line. practice at or drop practice bombs it was all done on it was all it was it was high and stuff really high tech. And clever stuff <laughs> yeah. there you go <laughs> brilliant good to meet you thanks Friggy. cheers then. I think we found it, Parky. Vintage so Car Radiator Company, must be it. Wonderful. Hello. Ah, hi. I'm ben. Ben, how do you do? Ben, Charlie Brown. Charlie, hi ben Parky. Parky. Welcome to Vintage Radiators. Fantastic. So it's a, a combination of vintage cars and, and vintage aircraft radiators. Yes, we do the vintage aircraft radiators uh, in one half of the building and then the vintage cars in the other half of the building. If you'd like to have a look, we can yeah, show you what yes, we've please. got going on. Is there much, um, I guess, the same technology, <coughs> the same? Very, very similar. If you think the that sort of late 20s, 30s, sort of slightly pre-war yeah. factories that were yeah. building uh, cars and radiators as the war came on, do you know what I mean? That they move their... Less cars, more aircraft, war production. Very similar. Um, yeah. Type of manufacturing, though. So obviously, this is a, this is a Bentley built by Gallet. Yeah. Um, but the same skills, the same exactly core the same, requirements. Yeah, just same materials. Transfer your skills and coppers, build a brass radiator. Yeah. yeah. You've got Bentleys, all sorts of stuff on the shelf ready to go. You see, sort of Bentleys, Hispanos. Um, what else have we got there? Alfa Romeos. Any aircraft? Uh, there's, a, there's a Hawk Hurricane that we've got. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're working on. Look at that! Beautiful, isn't it? This is a, an old six and a half litre Bentley that's come in for rebuild. Ooh. Yes, indeed. My uh, word, uh, look at that. So Bentley radiator of some description. It's not a supercharged one, but, but what's that? No, from? so it's a four and a half litre WO Bentley radiator. They oh, were made by uh, Galley back in the uh, late 20s, early 30s. Um, and like we said earlier, Galley developed from doing radiators like this and Ligondas and ACs and Fraser Nashes. Uh, and went on to the aircraft radiators and produced them so for. That does look familiar as well. Some Spitfires, along with other companies, in fairness, mm. but Galley were a, a company that specifically did uh, car and aircraft radiators. That is a thing of great beauty. That's a beauty. My confidence is largely increased in these radiators. <laughs> this gentleman obviously knows his trade. Marvelous. And this one, what's this one? This is. So this is a. Yeah, set? this is a. Or glycol water radiator yep. for a Spitfire. So it's a it's called a QCP. There are two of those on a Mark Nine, yep. Yep. one under each wing, and then paired with that on one wing, you'd have the oil cooler, and on the other wing, as you know, you'd have the intercooler. Yeah. So, but they're identical, and usually for a British design, you anticipate them being different, being different for each wing, but, yes. but, uh, but actually wow. identical. So that's doing half of the 
engine cooling on a on a Merlin. Yeah. And roughly how much does that weigh? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty heavy. It we kind of looks, it it kind of looks yeah, like, because it's silver, but I dare say it's pretty damn heavy. I suspect it's probably about 30, 35 kilos. Gosh, but, uh, yeah. And deeper in terms of the depth compared to the uh, Yeah, the cars, so isn't it? The, the quicker the, the car or the aircraft's going, the, uh, the, the thicker the core could be. You know, you're doing two, three hundred miles an hour yeah. mm -hmm. in, a, in a Spitfire. The core's a, a foot thick. So because, because of that extra speed, it stays cooler. Exactly. By the in. time it's got to the back of the core, still cooler air at the back. Whereas, yeah. at slower speed, it would be hotter. Then, so it'd be, it wouldn't be cooling as well. Yeah. So the, the supercharged um, four and a half litre, the, the blower Bentley, has a four inch core. The the non supercharged one has a two and a half inch core. So they've shortened it slightly, but made it deeper. But because the car's producing slightly more power faster. and slightly faster, yeah. you've still got the cool air at the back of the core, efficiently yeah. cooling it. See, we've got two radiators here. This one looks like it's seen better days. Yes. Wartime? So, yes, a wartime. So that's an oil cooler. Yep. Um, obviously, an original one. It's got a, a bit of damage here, but yeah. it's just, just one to illustrate the, the, the old versus the new. And then this is the one that we're rebuilding for, for MJ. So um, This is MJ's uh, Yeah, this is the oil, MJ's cooler. oil cooler. So you can see um, it's been dry assembled. We've started the riveting process. You've got the skin pins, which you've seen before on the fuselage and yeah, the wings yeah. and bits and pieces. Um, again, similar process. There's obviously a lot of internal work to go. Um, There's even an amazing amount of work just on the, the skin of the oil cooler, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. The, the oil coolers are particularly complicated because of the bypass system. They're, they're double skinned. There's lots of internal baffles um, and, and bracing, as well as the external stiffening and mounting steel work yeah. that goes yeah. on there. Well, all we normally get to see is this view here, exactly. the and then from the back, of the, back, back of the wing, that view there, exactly. down the back. Hopefully yeah. not dribbling any oil. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. And in terms of the design, the plans to make them as original as they were yeah. back in the day, what, what do you use for that? So it's a combination. We reverse engineer a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Everything's made exactly the same as it was uh, during the war. We, we have to do yeah. that. Um, but we've got some surviving drawings. I've got some of those that I can show you. Um, this is for a, actually a slightly earlier radiator, uh, like a Mark I style oh, water yeah. radiator, the, the double, but we've got a, a selection of red drawings and yeah, they are the, the actual original the things. things. Yeah. What sort of flow rate are you thinking of putting through the, uh, the cooling radiator? Well, so the, the, the flow rate on the water radiator, the QCP is 65 gallons per minute. 65 gallons per minute. And you've two radiators, so that's double, that. double it up. We've got a test for you outside. We can show you, we can illustrate to you what 65 gallons a minute looks like. Because obviously you're running a, a, a sealed system on the Spitfire. You know there's a lot of coolant going through, but to sort of help what illustrate what's going like? on, yeah, what does it actually look that. like. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to get wet parking. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on a second, what's this? Uh, that, like it's led a, uh, a, a rather interesting life, yes. That's, uh, that's a radiator from a, a PR4, a photoreconstant Spitfire. Um, actually, it's a very interesting story. It was lost in March 1942 whilst taking photos of the Tirpitz. Um, the, the pilot was surprised by two 109s and was shot. Um, the, had a coolant leak, so had to bail so out quite quickly. So this is in the quickly. fjord in Norway? Yeah, so he bailed out. Um, the, the plane crashed into the side of a fjord and was recovered a few years ago. But the, the story of the pilot is fantastic. So. He bailed out and survived, was helped by some local children. Um, very quickly, the, the Germans knew because he'd been shot down and he was captured. Mm. He was taken to Stalagluf III, which is famous for the Great Escape. He, um, Sandy Gunn was the pilot. He was part of the digging team on the Tom Tunnel, the security, and the yeah. Germans obviously found that. He then moved on to that Harry Tunnel. Um, he was the 68th person to escape out of the Harry Tunnel. Um, was captured a couple of days later, was on the run, but was one of the 50 that was murdered by Hitler um, on their way back to the base. What an amazing bit of history, Ben. Yes. And speaking of which, I heard that maybe you've got some original radiators still kicking around that are almost in their, their wrappers? Yes, we've got some still in their shipping crates. We could go that way on out to the water We'd to test if you'd like to have a look. But don't disturb them too much, they're precious things. No, let's go.
So wow. here we are. Look at that. That is amazing. You don't find these every day. No. <clears throat> Nine Spitfire crates, all with the original radiators and intercoolers and an oil cooler. It's completely original, isn't it? So Griffin Spitfires Mark 22. Yes, 22, 21. Uh, yeah. Compatible with the uh, late Sea Fires as well. What a bit of history. Yes, and incredibly well preserved inside. They're they're all whacked, wrapped in their cosmoline. So they, you could literally take them out test them, do the, what we're going to see now. Potentially. And potentially, if they pass, yeah, put them I in mean, a spit. We've not opened every single one. We've opened a couple just to see what, what we'd actually bought. And they are like new? And they are like new. They're fantastic condition. Hopefully one day um, they'll find a use and they'll be they'll on, find a, a on an aircraft somewhere. And they'll be able. Yeah. That's so sure. So this is uh, a simulation of the 65 gallons in one minute through a radiator. That's quite a flow, isn't it? It is. You can just imagine that sort of thing, you know, full chat. That's what's going through the radiators, they, yeah. mate. That's what's that being pumped around pump the engine. Just yeah. Churns it round, doesn't it? It's going to have to do two the of, whole time. Yeah, for the two, two of those radiators. Two of those per. Yeah, per yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. Like six <coughs> cylinders essentially. Yes. The coolant yeah. pump's smashing it round. Yes. It's yeah. a lot of water, isn't it? It's amazing that pressure can go down and far it back up and out, yeah. and it's going through all that. All those fins. All those fins, yeah. all yeah. the way down <coughs> in that <coughs> that speed. Amazing. So each tube sort of. Two inches long by an eighth of an inch wide. It's tiny, isn't it? Yeah, and you've got those four deep and yeah, all the way across. It flows <coughs> through that quickly. <coughs> Amazing. You wouldn't have thought it would be able to flow through that quickly. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's it a big, powerful engine getting, yeah, yeah, getting yeah. really hot. Yeah. Very closely cowed as well, aren't they? So yeah, yeah, all yeah, of the yeah, heat's yeah. retained inside. Charlie, Harkey, this is Robert. Hey, Robert. Robert's going to be showing you how to solder in a core. Gosh, so a bit of soldering. Well, you set yourself up for it, haven't you? So, um, you come to somewhere where we solder every day, then you've got to have a go at soldering, haven't you? Obviously, yep. You've, you've obviously done to. it before. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, this is a very valuable section of a hurricane core, right. as you can see. The asymmetric hexagon tubes on one end. Yes, yeah. A symmetrical hexagon down their lengths with the blisters to prevent collapse under G force turns. Okay. Quite valuable. Quite valuable. Quite labour intensive. Um, we've knocked you up a bit of a flange to simulate how you would solder it into a radiator casing. Okay. And this is especially for you to have a go on. <coughs> so, mm. basic rules of soldering is cleanliness. That's where you've got to start. The slightest bit of dirt, corrosion, forget it, it's not going to go. Okay. So everything's got to be spotlessly clean. As you can see, this is all spotlessly clean. Yep. So um, I'll do a little bit here and show, show me you how. what's happening, and then you can have a go yourselves. First thing we've got to do is put a flux on. So this is a non acidic flux, so it doesn't eat into the tubes. Yep. Don't want any nasty residues left in there afterwards. Yep. We're using a piece of blowpipe solder. Solder, yep. Heat goes into the job. You can see the colour. If you come a bit Charlie, closer, Charlie, you'll see. If you watch the solder and the colour of the solder, you'll see it turn. Oh, yes. So you see it go there? Yep. That's when it starts to become molten. So as soon as it's at that stage, your solder will melt onto it. You can then start applying your solder stick. The solder will pull in because it's a bit of a capillary joint. And it pulls into the tubes. Ah, oh, so you, you want it to go into those tubes. Yeah. You need it to pull in. So it needs to pull down yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. into the bottom of the flange to give it a nice, solid, strong joint. Did you want it to go into those ones there, though? Sorry. Well, those were already a bit blocked, so 
an ideal world, no, but, mm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> got a critic here today, yeah. that's fine. Oh so, um, I've started you off, so you can carry on along there. I'll do just that one line. So, flux will do but two things. So, it helps you key the material, it keeps it active. Yeah. But if you're overheating it, you can also give it a quick dab and it'll cool it down. So if you warm where you want to start, turn it so you're pointing it at it, you'll see it turn. When you say see it turn. There you go, it. so you can see it turn now, see it go silvery, and now you're molten. Don't forget you've got to transfer the heat between the flange to the tubes. This is more difficult than I thought. Is that too little or is that okay? That's good, yeah. It's like being on the generation game. There you go. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. Charlie, you have control the torch. You have control, sir. Right. All right, Charlie, I'll turn that around for you. If you hold that like a pencil. All right, just, down just the wipe thing, your yeah. brush along there yeah. to make sure you've got fresh flux along there. And start off in the corner. Real skill to make it even, isn't it? So I guess it can withstand that same pressure yes. the whole way round. Yeah, no it's points. a difficult balance. You've got to make sure you're pulling it right through yeah. across the flange, but not flooding it. You don't want a load of solder rattling around inside a radiator. Well, Charlie's quite nervous in case his moustache catches fire. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what do you think, Rob? Should we um, uh, shambles? <laughs> no, that's good. That's OK. That's OK. Um, you know, obviously, it takes quite a bit of practice and on a typical hurricane radiator you've probably got eight or nine thousand tubes you've got to solder not, yeah. not just a little piece yeah yeah um and to a casing that's quite strong and integral there's quite a difference between the thickness of the material of the casing that you're soldering to yeah. and the five thou wall tube so it's a difficult balance wow. but that's good that's fantastic thank you so much thank that you was a well, yeah oh, wow. privilege to do that thank you cheers Rob. Thanks, Robert. Well done. Well, what a grand day out, Charlie. Learned a lot about the cooling system on the Spitfire. Yeah, Unbelievable. Yeah. It, it gives you a lot of respect for, uh, say, what's going on inside the engine and under the wings. Underneath it, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I think uh, we're off to Retro Track and Air to see the engine, yep. the Merlin. Yep. And, uh, for you watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, see us next time as we go down there. Cheers.